Hey there, good looking. Join me for this crunch free ab workout. Now you do need some tools, so please grab a yoga block as well as a moderate size dumbbell. For reference, I'm using a 10. All right, let's go train those abs. Hi there and welcome. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com as well as over50fitness.co. And hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, click that subscribe button, click that like button. I know you'll like this video before we get down on the mat and start training your abs. And if you are enjoying this workout ads free on the Over 50 Fitness app, make sure you head to our private community after this workout to let me know what you think. Now listen, this is a crunch free workout. So this is perfect for my friends who have osteoporosis, diatheses recti, or prolapse. Now there are a couple of moves where I'll do an extra cue for those of you with osteoporosis, but other than that, these are very safe and effective exercises. You ready? Awesome. Let's head down on the mat. We'll start with a breathing exercise and get connected with our abs and our core before we move on. So on your back, heels hip width apart and close to the bum. Arms down by the side. Now lift the head up, tuck the chin in, lower the head down so the back of the neck is long. Good. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And as you do, feel that belly button draw in towards the spine. Exhale. Feel the belly release. Good. Now as you draw that belly button into the spine, I want you to keep that neutral curve that's happening with your low back and the ground. So we're not pressing the low back into the mat. What we're doing is anchoring the low back in neutral spine. It's really important that you understand that core connection so that we can control and really control the movements that we're about to do as well as really isolate your transverse abdominis, your deep core muscle, your TA muscle. All right, now let's bring the yoga block close to us. We'll need it in a couple, but now from this position, keep your feet where they are. Slowly lower the hips up into bridge and lower, still keeping that connection with the core. So two-legged bridge, because we are training the core. So just a reminder, your core muscles are more than just your ab muscles. It's essentially your entire trunk from shoulders to hips. Now you lift up as high as it feels comfortable for you, but we want to engage the glutes and keep the rib cage knitted so we're not flaring the rib cage up. So our work time is 50 seconds for each move and just one round, everyone. So we're gonna go through a whole whack of different exercises today. It's gonna to be great. Moving into a one-legged bridge now, lower down, extend your left leg up only. And we're gonna keep this left leg still as we push into the right leg and drive that left heel up to your ceiling. Now into one leg bridge. Lift as high as you can. Have that right heel close to the bum so that we get more glute involved and less hamstring. Remember your breathing. Shoulders relaxed. And then if you find that you're pushing off with your hands, I just caught myself doing that. <laughs> Lift your arms up so we don't cheat. <laughs> yeah, even trainers cheat. <laughs> we should be getting a little bit more fiery in that right glute. Let's lower the left, get ourselves set up, other side, extend that right up. Now remember, we want that left heel close to the bum, and here we go, drive the heel in, pressing that right heel up to your ceiling now. We'll need the yoga block for the next move. Hey. 
time. All right, place the yoga block in between the knees widthwise. Now squeeze the knees so we activate the inner thighs. Draw that belly button in, and then from here, bring the knees up, and then using your abdominals, slowly lower to toe tap. So you're not curling the tailbone off of the mat. What we're doing is activating the adductors, the inner thighs first, and then we are lifting the knees up, and where the abs come into play is a slow return back home. So it's not curling the back, curling the tailbone off. And then what do we want to do with the breath? We want to keep it regular. And then that low back, remember, it's anchored but not pushed down. So you're using that TA muscle to really fire up and anchor the spine. Squeeze those inner thighs. They're a real important part of pelvic floor health. Time. All right, now you can place one hand behind the head just to hold the head, but I want you to grab onto the yoga block with one hand. Open the knees up, let them drop, come and squeeze the yoga block and do it again. So if you can reach your yoga block without lifting your head up, go for it. It doesn't matter which hand you're holding onto the yoga block. The whole idea of this exercise now is firing up those adductors, those inner thighs. So when they come in together, squeeze the yoga block for a breath and then drop them out wide. Nice. And you should be getting a little warm in the inner thighs here with this. Ooh, I really feel it. This is a great move. Keep that belly button drawn in. Time. Yoga block back in between the knees. Now let's lift the legs up. Squeeze the yoga block. Arms out in a T position. Palms down. Great. Now for my osteoporosis people, you're just going to do a little shift knee going to one side, center, a little shift knees going to the other side. So you're not doing a full rotation. For everyone else, we're dropping it down just halfway and then where the obliques come into play is a slow return back to center and then drop it halfway the other side. And we're not being lazy either with the inner thighs. We're still gripping that block, activating the adductors. So if you have osteoporosis, you'll still keep both butt cheeks on your ground. There's a good cue for you. Everybody else, you're going to lift one side up. Now your knees are over the hips, and your heels are lined up with your knees. We call this tabletop position. When the timer goes, we're continuing this, but we're adding on now. So keep going. And now as you drop to one side, kick the leg out. A lot harder. Come up, kick the leg out. Still squeezing that yoga block. You didn't know that you were coming in for leg workout too, did you? <laughs> Actually, neither did I. <laughs> it's just the way it worked. Now, the next exercise we need to be standing. I'm just giving you a heads up with our dumbbell. I'm going to show you a really cool anti-rotation exercise. And it's a great one to do if you're doing future workouts and they're doing something, for instance, like bicycle crunches. All right, those aren't really the best moves for you if you have any of the conditions I mentioned at the beginning. So here's a good sub for you. Time. All right. Bring yourself into a standing position as safe as you can. We're going to hold the dumbbell out. And this is going to be a bit of a shoulder burner, just a heads up. Bend the knees, bring the arms out. Now don't move the lower body and create big figure eights with the hands. So what we're resisting the urge to do is to rotate. That's why it's called an anti-rotation exercise. Let the dumbbells come right down or dumbbell come right down. My elbows are slightly bent for sure. And like I said, it's going to get into the shoulders. So the dumbbell you have is too much. Maybe grab your yoga block. The whole idea of this movement is not allowing that low body to rotate as we're making these big figure eights. Good. Draw that belly button in. A few more reps. 
time. All right, mirror me for me. Come down onto this knee and double up your mat if you need some mat underneath the, the knee there. Hold on to your dumbbell and then pretend you're throwing it over that shoulder. So we're upright and we're performing what's called a half kneeling wood chop. Really good, again, rotation move without a lot of rotation happening. And shoulders. <laughs> Here we go. We work shoulders, inner thigh, and your core. You're welcome. <laughs> One more. All right, let's do the other side. So our setup, I'll go to my side a bit. Dumbbell's just gonna hang in front of this back knee or back thigh and it's up and over. So I'm going on a diagonal. I'm not being really twisty with this. And I'm feeling everything. So this is why we like doing moves like this as trainers, because we're working more than just one muscle. Most trainers, we're not huge fans of isolation moves all the time. We want to work your body as a team, as one unit, because that's how your body functions out there in real life. There are times when we do need to isolate, like the inner thigh squeezes we did, and then there are times that we need to get the body coordinated as one whole team. Here we go, last two, one more. Excellent, dumbbell off to your side. Take yourself down onto one side for a side plank. Knees are bent for me, elbow underneath the shoulder. Once you've got that lift up, great. Now we work the inner thighs, we need to work the opposing muscle group, the outer hip, the gluteus medius. So keep the feet together and open and close, good. Now, if this is too much for you, hold the side plank, right? So adding this movement in the leg definitely intensifies the move. And be slow, controlled, and mindful. Let's do one more. And other side. So set up, elbow under shoulder. That's really important. It's gonna protect your shoulder joint. Knees are bent and forward slightly. Lift the hip up. Now again, this may be where you wanna stay. If you wanna add that leg lift, we keep the feet together and open up like a clam. We're moving on to our final exercise, probably my absolute favorite ab exercise, as well as ab exercise name. We're gonna be performing the dead bug. So if you're familiar with it, you can get yourself set up right away in about 20 seconds. If you're not, I'm gonna talk you through it. One more. Time. All right, here we go. On your back. Get your legs set up to tabletop. Remember, we, we learned that and that up at the beginning of the workout. Arms extended. Now pull the belly button into the spine. All right. And slowly lower one leg and the opposite hand. Don't allow that low back to lift and go back to center. Do it again. Other arm, other leg. Now we are drawing that belly button in like we learned in the breathing exercise. Anchoring that low back, but we're not smushing it. Good word, isn't it? Smushing. We're not smushing it into your ground, all right? We're keeping that neutral alignment. So us moving the arm and leg, we're trying to say to the low back, hey, come on, come on, lift off, lift off. Where your TA, your deep transverse abdominus muscles say, nope, I am anchoring the low spine. It's not moving. So... This is our last move, too. So make it count, make it look good. 
time. Woo, straighten the arms, straighten the legs. Oh, that feels good, that stretch, doesn't it? And either roll onto your side, use your arms to get up, or rock yourself up to a seated position. And thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I know that there are a lot of workouts out there, and today you chose me, so I am grateful. Drop a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, and have yourself a wonderful day. Bye.